Coming up, we'll tell you all about this year's Flower and Garden Festival at Epcot. And surprise, we really liked it. Coming up next, from the Bob Barley Studio in Orlando, Florida, this is the Diz Unplugged. This is the Diz Unplugged, episode 686 for the week of March 11th, 2014. The Diz Unplugged is brought to you by Dreams Unlimited Travel, experts at helping you plan the perfect Disney vacation. Visit them on the web at www.dreamsunlimitedtravel.com. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the show coming to you live from the Bob Barley Studio in Orlando, Florida. I'm your host. Pete Werner joined at the table this week by my good friends, Sean Thompson, Gregory Williams, <laughs> Kathy Whirling, Corey Martin, and back by himself in the production nook, Dustin West. Hi. <laughs> well, that isn't creepy at all. <laughs> um, we are going to talk to you a little bit about uh, this year's uh, Flower and Garden Festival and... Uh, before we get into the discussion, we are actually just going to run a, a video that Dustin has put together yeah. from this year's festival. So here it is. Okay.
right. So there's a little overview of this year's Flowering Garden Festival. If you want to watch that again, along with a few other videos we put up of the topiaries, the outdoor kitchens, and the Festival Center, head out to our YouTube page, WDW Info. There'll be a link to that in the show notes page. I don't know why that just came up. Yeah, that was a mistake. Um, Don't ever do that again. Um, Just so head out to our YouTube channel, and uh, you can check out all of our videos from this year's uh, Flower and Garden Festival. Now, um, before we get started, I just want to mention that a couple of years ago, um, I over I had said to Corey and John that if I have to cover another Flower and Garden Festival, <laughs> I'm going to gouge my eyes out with knitting needles. Yeah. Um, and you will. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I, I was just so completely fed up with Flower and Garden because it was exactly the same every single year. Now, I'm not going to sit here and say that they completely changed Flower and Garden, but I will say they absolutely upped their game. They had upped their game last year with the addition of the outdoor kitchens, um, which we call food kiosks during yeah. flower, uh, food and wine. Um, they definitely upped their game last year with that. This year, it just felt like they upped it again. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, even with the topiaries, although many of them are still the same, it just seemed that in terms of the like the ancillary flowers and the colors, everything just seemed bumped up. Um, you know, speaking to this kind of general tone, you know, with the addition of the uh, the outdoor kitchens and whatnot, last year they they added this uh, this kind of stuff. They kind of turned the tide. They they introduced this new stuff. This year, I feel like they have come along the path of perfecting that addition. Correct. You know. Especially the greatest invention in the history of mankind, the Piggylicious Maple Bacon Cupcake, mm-hmm. um, which really there's a uh, there's a Nobel Prize uh, to be awarded to the <laughs> person who came up with that. Um, but uh, this year, going around, all I kept saying to myself was, "Wow, this really looks good this year." And this is we were there on the first day, and historically speaking. The first day, everything, you know, would be kind of uh, things weren't weren't grown in. Right. Yeah. Um, Does does anybody else think that they got a jump on growing this stuff this year before they put it in? Because everything looked kind of full. It didn't look so. I think they put more plants in because I was there like two weeks before that and they hadn't really done much of anything. And then it, when they put it in, it looked like it had been there much longer than it actually had. You know, even from Saturday to Monday, we went on Saturday, just did, did, did the little quick stroll around um, Epcot. And then Monday, I saw, I saw new plants they had replaced already. So they, they're doing a lot of planning. I think they actively doubled things. Like I even heard uh, one of the guys in the festival center was talking about the orchids in Mexico. They doubled the amount of orchids they oh, put yeah. up in those trees. And you could really tell. I mean, Easily, the trees are just yes. covered in those orchids. Well, they oh. did, but I also heard uh, some some rumblings about uh, the flower and gardens and all the things they were putting up that they weren't actually prepared enough for it. That a lot of stuff hadn't grown to its full potential. Wow. So, but just looking at it, um, the only thing that I noticed that wasn't there that was supposed to be was the uh, Lotso Hug and Bear topiary back in the world or back in uh, American Adventure. But other than that, everything is there and it looks real good. I was I, I was very, very surprised um, at how much I enjoyed it this year. Um, and I've been a critic of it for a number of years now. The last couple of years, it's like it was going downhill and they had the topiaries, but they didn't have like the gardens around the topiaries. Right. And last year just sort of looked like they plunked them different places. Now this year, it's like, I don't know how many more flowers they have, but they have a lot more flowers than they did in previous years. Well, it's a, it's a true event now. Mm-hmm. It, I, I feel like for me, it's a true event. My experience with uh, Flower and Garden has completely changed now with all the, the added food and, and drinks around the world. I kept slipping up calling it Food and Wine Festival the whole yeah. time. Well, I, I have taken now to calling it uh, Food and Garden. Food. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's the Food and Garden Festival. Flower and Wine. Uh, Flower and Wine <laughs> works as well. Uh, I, uh, I, I think one of the reasons why it we're seeing this is because now there is a new revenue stream for flower and garden in the form Mm -hmm. of these outdoor kitchens. They're now, you know, and you know, as it is with food and wine, the stuff isn't cheap. I mean, you can expect to spend on average about five or $6 per item, uh, for, for the food at these outdoor kitchens. Some places it's worth it. Some places it isn't. 
Um, but generally speaking, I thought the food was quite mm-hmm. good. But before we get into all that, let's start with the topiaries. Um, I think the uh, uh, one of the ones that was new this year, we pointed out in the last show, the was the Kermit and Miss Piggy. Isn't that new this mm-hmm. year? Yeah, that, yes. that was the big one that they were pushing this year. I believe last year they were pushing uh, the Mike and Sully from Monsters mm-hmm. University. But this year it's all about the Muppets since Muppets Most Wanted comes out on the 21st. Uh, I think they did a wonderful job with the topiary. Uh, it's not overdone, but there's a lot of little touches that are on the actual topiary itself in the background that have to deal with the movie that people will understand once they're able to see those, right. like all the signs and stuff. But I, I think it was a great addition. I hope it comes back every year. And they're unbelievably detailed. Like her hair is like amazing. She has like a ring on her finger, her eyes, like the color blue around her irises. Like they put a lot of work into these I noticed, topiaries. I noticed a few topiaries with a lot more detail, like Snow White, for example. Mm-hmm. She looked like Snow White, her face. The new right. faces, yeah. yeah. Right. They gave them faces. Yeah, they, they gave them faces. They don't look like they've been <laughs> mossed over humans. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. You know? Um, Goofy, Donald, and Daisy at the at the front entrance. Uh, That's uh, brand new, you know. And well, they, I think they always change this up every year. Yes, Th- this is what I was talking about in our um, in our Facebook videos that we did. On if you were following along on the Diz Unplugged uh, Facebook page, you saw we put up a, a, a series of videos. And what I mentioned in that was. Uh, that it's not um, so over the top with the topiaries. It's not a big pirate ship or something huge at the entrance. It's very, it's very subtle, very elegant, you know, in that way. Um, they've they've come back to basics while still adding a lot of new elements as well and perfecting a lot of new elements as well. So I really like this topiary. It really sets the tone. It's spring is here. They're catching butterflies, and it, it's nice. I like it. And I know on one of our. Um fam tours for the travel agents one of the things we got to do was go back behind animal kingdom where they do the topiaries and when you see all the work that goes into one of them you get new appreciation you do you think you know the money that must be in each one of those and it sort of gives you a new appreciation for that they have so many of them throughout the park um what other topiaries stood out to you guys, I know mean, for me the uh, Snow White and the Seven mm-hmm. Dwarves that yeah. was amazing. For me, it um, was the soccer, the World yes. Cup soccer one. Yeah, in the uh, the center of uh, Future World, they uh, had a, a series of like soccer balls uh, around the football field that had the different flags that are participating in the World Cup. And uh, Donald and Goofy are taking a shot. And this is also very interactive. A lot of yeah. people are posing for their pictures in front of the goal. Yeah, yeah, there was quite a few. Yeah, but not I, just standing next to a topiary. But did you find it interesting? Fun. There was no, we didn't see a photo pass photographer there. They had some sort of cast. member. They had a was cast there. member there, just kind of like you know, right, keeping right. people moving, because a lot of people were lining up to get you know get their picture taken in front of the the goalpost. But I, I would have thought that would have been a great. I don't know if they assumed it was going to be as popular as it was in terms of taking a picture right next to it, because mm-hmm. that first day that we were there. They didn't even have that little fence up that we saw in the right. picture. People were going right up to the ball, trying to touch it, kick it, um, getting really close to Goofy. And then all of a sudden, now there's a fence up the next day. And then, you know, it's only a matter of time. There might be a photo pass person out there right now for all we know. Just got to go back and check. What else stood out in terms of uh, topiaries to you guys? Um, for me, I liked the – we saw the picture of the intro, like the main one outside of Spaceship Earth in front in, next to uh, Leave a Legacy. They've added a big water feature in that area, which it's I think beautiful, is nice. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. kind of a lily pond. They have different flowers in that, um, and there's like a waterfall, and it's kind of two-sided. So it's a good picture if you stand right there in front of uh, Spaceship Earth and the monorail comes by. So It's a great photo. Yeah. Line. Oh, yeah. My, my favorite is the dancing couple as you're heading towards France. Unidentified that, dancing couple? Yes, the unified, unidentified. But with the tree in the background, I took a picture of the dancing couple with a boat in the background with the tree. That to me, it's like, wow, that says spring. Yeah, that's Sleeping Beauty and uh, Prince yeah. Philip. I like, like the Fantasia out front. Um, like last year, that's where the Monsters University area mm-hmm. was. And it just kind of felt like they had a great topiary right there. And then on the sides, they just put up giant plants that they put like fake monster eyes and stuff on. And now it completely covered. You have Sorcerer Mickey in the front, the brooms right beside him. You have the hippos and the alligators on one side. You have the mushrooms on another side. Like they, they put a lot of work into it and made it an actual theme right there instead of just one 
actual Pl- topiary. Yeah, plopping yeah. something there yeah. like yeah. they usually do. So yeah. I, I, li- I like Mike and Sully that they've they're mm-hmm. in in the playground. I also I've always enjoyed Beauty and the Beast over in France. It's a yeah. perfect backdrop, and also the hidden Peter Pan on top of the UK. Yes, yeah. yes, building. I like that one. Yeah. I think yeah. the only problem with Mike and Sully in the playground though is. Those, those playgrounds start to smell like poop at about <laughs> after the sun hits it. So only gotta, after the sun hits it. Yeah, okay. you have to kind of like go in with a big deep breath of air. And we went before out. lunch, so we were safe. That was yeah. a good plan. There's yeah. 21 different locations with topiaries, so that's quite a few. Do we have them all listed here, Dustin? Uh, pretty much, yeah. The four new ones are the spring is in the air at the opening, the soccer goofy. Mike and Sully's Monstrous Garden and Kermit and the Frog and Miss Piggy are the four new ones. And a new, this year. A new addition as well is Timon to the Lion King. Uh, they made a big deal about oh, that yeah. as well. I don't know why. It's just the little Timon yeah. guy. Right. That's another great photo op, though. I like that uh, mm-hmm. the location mm-hmm. of that uh, those two topiaries. And yeah. the Snow White one, I was saying to one of these guys, if you stand just right, you know the where the flame comes out of the torches mm-hmm. there? It looks like Snow White has the crown on her head. I don't know if that was intentional, but if you line your picture up just right, you <laughs> get the, that. Wow. The best thing is to wait until nighttime when the torches come on. And <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but, uh, you know, other than that, you know, uh, the usual topiaries you expect to see at Flower and Garden. Uh, but like we said, the gardens around them, the flowers around them have definitely, it's been bumped up. It mm-hmm. makes it just, it makes such a huge difference. Mm-hmm. It makes such a huge difference, just those little touches, those little details, um, which it started to feel to me like Flower and Garden was getting away from those details. And like we said, they were just kind of plopping these things there, calling it Flower and Garden and hoping more people came. And I think they had to add the uh, outdoor kitchens in order to draw more people in because it was getting boring. In addition to the outdoor kitchens, in <laughs> terms of making this feel like a more uh, well-rounded event, there I don't know when they started doing this recently, but they hand out the passports like they do at mm-hmm. the food and wine. I know they had that last year, I believe. But it, it uh, along with the maps, the, the guide maps that have like everything on it, these uh, passports kind of get you in the spirit of, okay, I want to see everything. I want to mm-hmm. get that stamp everywhere. So it turns it into an adventure like it does in food and wine as well. Right. Saturday was a complete madhouse. It shows, it was crazy. It shows yeah. how popular this this is especially for I mean it was a beautiful day for one and second you know all the Florida residents are are hitting it up Mm -hmm. sure it was absolutely packed now the festival center uh, is located at the old uh, wonders of life pavilion it's so sad when I walk in there Mm -hmm. and it's just like Really? This is all this could be for now? They've done a good job uh, over the years. It feels like they've done more and more to kind of hide the fact that it used to be Wonders of of Life when you go in. Because I remember the first time I went in, it was either Food and Wine or Flower and Garden, but they use that as the festival center for both sometimes. And you could still see Body Wars (laughs) right there. Yeah, They've they've done a good job at making this uh, feel like it's actually purposed you know, for this use. Right, right. This is where you're going to find uh, a lot of merchandise. The merchandise locations are located all around uh, World Showcase as well. Uh, but this is, I think, the largest uh, single yeah. uh, location for merchandise. And they've got some good stuff. I actually, I picked up a bunch of stuff that's sitting out in my backyard right now. And uh, I'm going to say something, you know, as somebody that normally stays away from solar lights because they never work. <laughs> um these really work well, and they hold a charge for a long time. They run all night, and they look great. So it's worth the money. They're a little more expensive than most solar lights, but they're really – I just want to point, point that out to people that if you see these and like, yeah, you know what, if you're like me and solar lights, yeah, they, it sounds good on paper, but, yeah. you know, these things will light for about 20 minutes and then die. Uh, these actually hold a charge all night. I, You know, mine kick on about 8 o'clock. And uh, when I go to bed at like one or two, they're still going. Mm. Um, and uh, so just, you know, pointing that out to people. But um, also the uh, uh, Nikki did a good blog. We'll have a link to that on the show notes page on the merchandise available yeah. at the festival. Um, but uh, the, the, the festival center is also where um, HGTV has a lot of its, uh, yeah. its uh, uh, seminars. Uh, that go on throughout the festival. And I've never been to one of these seminars. Have I you? saw Vern mm-hmm. last year. Mm-hmm. Vern, yep. Yep. I love Vern. Yep. <laughs> yep. 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 Sure. yep. I love Vern. Yep. You've been to some of these, Kathy? Mm-hmm. Are they any yeah. good? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if you're into gardening and 
different things. Yeah, and it, and the chance to get to see your favorite HGTV personality. TV person. yeah. yeah, my mom she really enjoyed Vernon. I think it was uh, Trading Spaces. Mm-hmm. Uh, yes, that's, that's what I used to do. So from, yeah. after the after the seminar, he was signing uh, signing stuff. So he signed something to my mom. It was really cool. No. Yeah, a few years back, I went. There was this guy when I lived in Pennsylvania. Um, he did Florida Gardens down here, and I got to meet him at Flower and Garden. And you know, there are a few times that I totally lose it. But his claim to fame was he would step on a shovel and grab the handle as it came up, where like <laughs> me, it would smack me in the face. <laughs> but he did that at Flower and Garden. Here, it turned out that that's where he started his landscaping career was at Disney World. Really? Yeah. And it's like, oh wow, well, hey, that's that's really cool to know. So, yeah. So the Festival Center is where you find all that good stuff. It's definitely worth checking out, though. And I, would, I just want to make a note that there is a, a, I don't know if it would be popular or not popular, but a new uh, a piece of merchandise, which is the gnome Duffy, oh. who has taken taken over uh, Mickey's So sick spot. of Duffy. I mean, there's still gnome Mickey, but Duffy is making his way in there as well. Gnome Duffy. <laughs> what is it with, why are they trying to make Duffy happen? Stop trying to make Duffy happen. Duffy's not going to happen. <laughs> Just, I don't know. Duffy doesn't, I don't know. Does anybody like Duffy? I could Not care really. less. There are people. Asian people love him. Yeah. Asians love Duffy. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> like in Tokyo Disneyland, and I mean, he's crazy popular over there. Really? I, I don't mean that as a me. I, I don't know. It's just, just a fact. And the Duffy on the TV at the resort when it does bedtime with Duffy or whatever, that's sort of cute because it really... It's so. I didn't know that existed. Yes, <laughs> Anime yes. Duffy. I, one night I would. Duffy can haunt your dreams now. <laughs> no, it, it like helps the kid like wind down. I thought that was sort of nice for that. Yeah. <laughs> Smell. Oh, never mind. <laughs> Be gone, Duffy. Um, all right. The other uh, thing I want to talk a little bit about are the different gardens that are uh, around Epcot as part of. Uh, Flower and and garden, uh, the garden retreat, which is just a couple of like rocking chairs. I just love how there's a bouncer there. <laughs> there's a customer that stands right outside the gate. <laughs> well, just so you can stamp your your meaningless passport and that you're going to lose out. and throw this away. Is, this is the most out of place little garden that they have of all of them. I, I don't. I just it was don't odd, it. and it's just like a old bunch. Of, it was like an old folks home because it was just <laughs> a bunch of old people sitting out there talking to each other. Um, it's like, it's not know. completely in the shade either. It's, no, it's yeah. not. There's like very. There's not a lot of shade there, and you know somebody's going to have heat stroke. Um, you got uh, Festival Blooms, um, and uh, which was uh, large flower displays on the banks of the ponds, which That's the is main. always a always a great a great uh, picture opportunity, especially uh, when the monorail's coming by. Mm-hmm. And uh, You've got uh, the floating gardens that are actually in the ponds themselves, in the little water beds, water features that are around Epcot. Yeah, these um, are the these are the standard issue stuff they've had for years. Yeah, and yeah. they look fantastic. It's already. amazing how they do that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's amazing how they do that. Um, of course, uh, the Everglades Garden near uh, near Canada, um, the Merry Meadows Outpost near Le Cellier, uh, the Vacation Club kiosk. I don't remember that one. It's just it's just a small little thing uh, back behind because they have the bear sculpture, and then they have this garden behind the. Uh, Is that where Bambi, Bambi and Thumper? Yeah. yeah oh right yeah, yeah, there, yeah 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 okay okay. Yeah. Um, the English Tea Garden, which I love, I just it's so beautiful. Uh, at the UK Pavilion, they did a great job with that. This they year. always do. They always do, and that's a great space for that. They can really kind of uh, take over that that garden outside uh, of the UK, back behind where the the band plays. It's a it's a nice space to be able to put a tea garden there. And you know, just just uh, theming wise, I, that is like one of my favorite pavilions, the UK Pavilion. Yeah. It just I think it, and that garden just fits in so beautifully there. And you know, I just. I was thinking, do you remember in France, they used to have like the scratch and sniffer. You could lift the lid and smell the perfume. I see that's not there this year. Didn't mm-hmm. I I really remember miss that. it. I remember mm-hmm. that, yeah. You could go around and they had the different fragrances and you could smell them and it would tell you what flowers they used to make it. Oh, okay. And then there's the Florida Fresh Garden between Germany and the African Outpost in World World Showcase, which I, I believe is also where the beer was. Yeah, it's at yeah. that uh, little uh, outdoor kitchen. And there's lots of like kumquat trees here because I guess those yes. are bountiful in Florida. Yes, they are. They are, but don't eat off of them because a lot of time they're treated with 
Walter learned this the hard way. Too vegan manure. <laughs> um, well, no, I mean, you know, especially like, you know, I forgot where he was, but, you know, there was a kumquat tree. He grabbed a kumquat and started eating it. And I'm like, you know, this, these are probably sprayed with stuff to, like, keep them from getting pests and things like you don't know how. And he got so sick. Mm. So you don't. Don't be grabbing stuff off trees in Florida if you don't know where they, you know, if you don't know what what's going on with them. If it's in a friend's backyard, that's one thing. But because uh, one of the houses I, I lived in when I first moved down here had a kumquat tree in the backyard, and they were delicious. And you know, I knew what they were treated with because it was in my backyard. But you know, they are they're all over the place in Florida. So, mm-hmm. but um, so the gardens are the gardens are definitely cute. You know, I know you guys love the Florida Fresh Garden because you got your beer there. That's yeah. where they have the watermelon salad, too, that's really good. I didn't try that. have to try that. Um, the play areas, which I'm sure Corey hit at least one of them uh, with the hit, kids. We hit all but one. Yeah. So you've we, got the gardener's palette, um, which was really cool because it was showing like the... Uh, the different seasons, <laughs> I think. Is or, and also the complementary colors for mm-hmm. different types of flowers, which yeah. was, was really neat. Um, so it's like a color palette except done with flowers. Mm-hmm. Um, I took made sure to take pictures of that because I'm never good at saying, okay, I've got red here. What's the complementary color to jazz up my flower bed? So now I have a cheat sheet. Now you have a little cheat sheet. Uh, Mater's Parts, Plants, and Play Garden. Um, that's where this the, one. Yeah. That's where the uh, where, where Toe Mater and, and uh, Lightning McQueen from Cars, the topiaries are there, and there's a, a play area there. And that's, that's kind of cool, and there's like a little – scavenger hunt type of thing mm-hmm. going on there too i think these um, uh these play areas are, are what really uh why we enjoy flower and garden so much because food and wine festival the kids just watch us eat and drink here we actually can which is like home <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh, here we can just let you know let them play wear them out a little bit and then stroll. while you go and eat and drink <laughs> yeah here we'll, we'll, we'll be right back <laughs> finley watch ferris <laughs> <laughs> but i i wish they would do this for food and wine they're bringing food and wine stuff into flower and garden i wish they would take some of these aspects and bring it into food and mm. wine that's not a bad idea uh mike and sully's monstrous garden right Am I get yes. that, get that right yeah. that one looks dangerous it's fun <laughs> what was the age range on that one i think this was uh three to twelve uh there's w- one section that's uh, a certain age range and the other that's uh you know how there's two separate mm-hmm. two separate play areas I think one was like three to mm-hmm. three to seven, and one was three to twelve or something. To twenty six, yeah, like yeah. The, big, like the big one, older uh, kids. Can play Dustin one. was disappointed that he just missed it by a year. <laughs> <laughs> that that one has like uh, the, I think there's one section that has like slides and more yeah. toddler stuff, and then as uh, we have a picture in here that's more like a jungle gym. Right, that that's you can the where the older. Yeah, and then we have the backyard play garden between France and Morocco, and. Uh, <laughs> How do you how do you think these play areas? I mean, they do a good job with these. Oh, absolutely! Our kids love them. Because I run right past them. Well, I know we, we ran past that one because we just got the kids ice cream in France, so we had to like look make them look this way, <laughs> distracting so them wanna, with ice cream. <laughs> yeah, so we had to stroll past that one really fast. But they enjoy it. They they look forward to it, and it gives us a break to just kind of you know stop strolling and wear them out. It's it's a it's a blast. Of the, there are several exhibits, and I'm not going to go into each one of them individually. Um, one I want to mention is the butterfly garden this year. Um, one of my biggest complaints with the butterfly garden is usually in the first few days, uh, there are no butterflies, or the butterflies that are in there are just like you know not the ones you want to see. This year, it was loaded with butterflies. I mean, it was crazy how many. Which ones don't you want to see? Like the, like the ones that aren't colorful? Well, just like the white ones. Oh, like yeah, the yeah, yeah, white yeah. ones you see anywhere. That could be a moth. <laughs> right. It's, it's just like, moth it's or a pretty butterfly. Moth. It's a pretty moth. Um, <laughs> Toe or finger. <laughs> but one thing that really bothered me was the number of parents letting their children manhandle and mm-hmm. kill oh, these butterflies. Yes. And, I mean, the place, it's like, it's like a death camp for butterflies because mm-hmm. these things are... Like you see dead butterflies strewn all over the place because, oh, look, the butterfly. And, of course, you know, Johnny's the most precious thing in the world. He's allowed to do whatever he wants. And these parents don't say anything. You want to beat them with your camera. Well, what is it, like the caterpillar room in, uh, in Toy Story 3? Is that the one that kids were going crazy? Yeah. Like yeah. tearing up the toys? Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Um, but loaded with butterflies. You know, talking about that, what's not in the butterfly house, do you remember they used to have, like, the colored sponges? That the butterflies, like, it had the... 
like butterfly nectar or whatever. Nectar or yeah. whatever. Those aren't there this year because it was like you you knew that you could always see butterflies there, and it's not there this hmm. year. I well, probably because of this very reason. That that could be. Yes. Um, also, what I love about the butterfly garden are the little. Uh, Fairy houses, the little yes. miniature fairy houses that are all over the place. Really well done. And even the sculptures. They should sell those. Yes, they, they should. should. They should sell those because they would make a fortune. They'd make a fortune on me because I'd have like my entire backyard full of those. I mm-hmm. just think they're absolutely adorable. I could never make one because I just don't possess that kind of creativity. But um, I'd say that's where the tooth fairy lives. It just creeps me <laughs> out going in there. <laughs> it doesn't look creepy. I went last year. That's, I won't go back this year. Can't force me. Why, you don't like it? I don't like it. Are butterflies scared? are butterflies creepy. landing on you? Butterflies aren't creepy. They're they're a, a creepy. I was obsessed with butterflies. <sighs> You're like, John, you want to like spray yourself with off before you <laughs> walk in? <laughs> Just, I take the nice path around and wait for the monorail to come so I can take pictures of that. He doesn't like walking through the chain wall. There was a lady in front of us that had a butterfly on her hat, and where they're like, there's a butterfly on your hat. And she's like, no, no, there's a butterfly on your hat. And I'm like, well, before she goes to swat it away, I wanted to get a picture of it. So, <laughs> so there are several exhibits. Like I said, I'm not going to go through each one of them, but that's that was my personal favorite. But I do want to spend a few minutes before we close this up talking about the outdoor kitchens. Yeah. Because um, this is really where they, uh, they shined. For me, number one, the smokehouse at mm-hmm. the U.S., First of all, I thought the the food there was very good. Um, the turkey rib I thought was very good, um, but that that piggylicious and I'm not making up that word. That people on Facebook thought I was calling it piggylicious. It's not. That's what it's actually called: the piggylicious maple bacon cupcake with pretzels on top. It is American perfection. It's all the smell. It is our gift to China. the rest of the world. I mean, it's, you can smell that. That whole area smells oh, like barbecue. And there are Wonderful. literally, there are literally big chunks of bacon. But you know, when we had it the the first day, and then we went back Saturday, was it? On Saturday, they were like chilled, and we the, found the icing, same thing. the yeah. icing wasn't as flavorful because it was a little bit. The icing and the cupcake itself was crumbly because they had just crumbly. taken them right out of the fridge. Yeah. So they need to come to room temperature before you eat them. I yeah. think. Yeah. Yeah. So that's yeah. Sad. I might try it without the icing. And the no, girl, the oh, icing no, adds no, to it. Though, icing, really. just too Maybe not all of it, but you have to have it all together. Here's an insider tip: it's actually available somewhere else on property, at the food truck at Downtown Disney, at the Epcot Flavors Around the World food truck. Oh, really? That okay. Cupcake. Really? Yeah. Okay. Cool. So, what else? What were your favorites of the uh, outdoor kitchens? Uh, I think we should talk about the Urban Farm Eats because that that's was one of my the new. Mm-hmm. Um, that was the new outdoor kitchen this year, and it had this uh, ghost pepper <coughs> chili um, dusted dusted tilapia, tilapia and it, it was good. That was a good portion. Too. It was very good. It was a nice sized piece of fish, and then it had like a melon slaw and mint oil on top. Yeah, there of was it. nothing on, in that kiosk that interested me. Oh yeah, they had yeah, well, sorghum beer. seafood and sorghum. Hmm. sorghum they had what beer? What the sorghum hell is sorghum? Beer? <laughs> It changed. It, it changes with every taste, every bite of your food. It was the a beer gluten-free beer, yeah. so it was meant to you know, not have any wheat in it, so they used sorghum instead. Well, and then they had the eggplant scallop there, yeah. which, I mean, I should have figured it was going to be eggplant. Scallop in quotes. Yeah, yeah. right. It was going to just be eggplant shaped like a scallop, and that's actually what it was. It was good. But... See, I see the word scallop, oh, well, and mm. I ain't going near it. One of my favorites. I don't eat seafood at all, oh. yeah. so... One of my favorites was the Lotus House in China. They had some. Uh, they had some really good. That stuff was good there. too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They had. Uh, they had a pancake. A chi- uh, I forget what it was called. It was a pancake that had chicken in it. Right. Oh my god! It was so good. And uh, spring rolls, and then these uh, like glazed strawberries that had honey on them. And they were the freshest strawberries the- I have ever tasted. They were so good, and yep. then they're glazed. With this honey mixture to give them like a, a hard shell, but not too hard. It was just to make it a little crispy. And, um, they were beautiful. They were incredible. So shiny. It was my favorite dessert I tried. That was incredible. I, I usually take the the desserts because everyone else wants the yeah. good stuff. So I'll try the <laughs> the sweets. And I mean, they, they were excellent. I, I love them. your burden to bear. Well, even, it, it even, even during food and wine, uh, I always find the China, uh, the China kiosk to be one of the best. Oh, it's great stuff. The chicken pancake was called the spring pancake with grilled yeah. chicken and green apple. Yes. So it had little gl- apple slices in it, and it was so good. Oh, my God. Yeah. It was and, delicious. And the caprese salad in um, Italy. 
with the fresh fresh mozzarella and the uh, peppers. Ugh, and when we say rough. fresh mozzarella, I'm I'm saying like I that mozzarella tasted like it had been made that morning. Yes, um, that's how fresh it was. Uh, whether it was or not, I don't know, but it was very very very, very fresh. They also had a manicotti over there that is really tasty but if you're walking around a theme park it is like it's the, heavy the heaviest uh menu item that i got all that day it's very cheesy and very bready but delicious it was oh. really good yeah oh. for other really desserts good. they brought back the uh pineapple promenade yes which you yep. complained about the lack of rum pineapple we promenade. have that on video yes and your mother commented she did yeah <laughs> i tried the mango pale ale from there it's uh i'm glad i got the yeah. small one yeah, as, as Dustin man- mentioned, that uh, each one of us did a little, like, 45-second, one-minute video that was put up just on our Diz Unplugged Facebook page. And uh, that was uh, that was Craig's video. <laughs> it was so funny. I mean, it was the second year trying the, the pineapple Dole Whip with rum. And last year, it, it definitely wasn't strong enough, but they only had white rum, I believe, last year. And then this year, they added the the dark rum into it so that gave it a little bit more of a kick but still not quite there I'm they need to that. work out the portions um it, it could be the perfect dessert one day maybe <laughs> well he one wants day. like five shots i, I don't at need least that. a half of dark up. rum or use at least like, start melting well fast <laughs> they need to use quality rum that's a problem they use like the myers dark rum in there that yeah. cost ten dollars They'd go out and get like a bottle of seven tiki rum, uh, you know, something a little more flavorful. Pirate added in exactly something like that. That could be yeah, charge then, a couple more dollars yeah, for it. They'll charge a lot but, more dollars if they're using stuff like that. But I'd do it. I'd do yeah. it. So what else? What else in the food kiosk? Anything else that stood out to you guys? I don't know. Every place we stopped, we we enjoyed whatever. The only we had. place that I was disappointed with was uh, Mexico. Yeah. yeah. Yep, there's a pretty roundly. Uh, yeah, you guys had the taco. Me and Kathy had the quesadilla, which just tasted like mushrooms and cheese. Yeah, and it was nope. very bland. The very taco, bland. The taco was good. It was just really expensive. I think it was like five seventy five, almost six dollars for this taco, and not worth it. No, not worth it. But that was the only kiosk we stopped at where we said no, it wasn't worth the price. Yeah, every other one we felt that it was worth what we were paying. Yeah, it's expensive. It's not yeah. cheap. These things are ranging between four and six dollars an item, depending on on what you're getting. But you know what? I'd pay ten for that piggy delicious cupcake. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, that was so good. There were some items that they brought back from Food and Wine Festival. I know that one of the ones I enjoyed from the the Buttercup Cottage was the potato chive and cheddar cheese biscuit with smoked salmon tartare and sour cream. Yeah, that's incredible. Mm, yeah. I really, really love love starting my day with that. They have a pork and apple sausage there. That's really good, too. It's kind of like wrapped in, um, I don't know, kind of like a breading. Almost like a, Which kiosk is this? This is the same one at the Buttercup. Butter at, uh, okay. It's at the, the UK, Ireland one. The UK. Yeah. Um, but it's like a, it's a good pork apple sausage, and they wrap it in kind of a breading. And then it's served with, I think, little roasted vegetables. I think they have like a, not curry, but some kind of yellow flavoring with it. It's good. Well, overall, um, not a lot to complain about. Uh, or criticize with this year's Flower and Garden mm-hmm. Festival at all. Absolutely worth going out of your way for. They have, if they keep this up, this becomes the new food and wine. And I think that's saying a lot. And I think people will plan their vacations around this if they keep moving in this direction because uh, I know that I can't wait to go back. I can't, I can't believe I'm saying those words out loud about Flower yeah, and Garden. That's true. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I can't wait to go back. It has been so disappointing for so long. And last year, they were definitely moved in the right direction. This year, they've got it right. They have got it right. They did a great job with it. It is absolutely worth checking out, and we hope you do. And that will do it for this segment. For those of you watching live, stay tuned. We're going to be talking about the other exciting new thing at Walt Disney World, the Festival of Fantasy Parade that just launched this past weekend at the Magic Kingdom. So take it easy, everybody. We hope you enjoyed, and we'll be back with you again next time with another edition of the Diz Unplugged. Take care, everybody, and remember... Stay out of the damn lakes. <laughs> <laughs>